we're all very privileged to have Dr. Teddy Merry here today, who is a real leading light in this research and can um, come up here and share some of his wisdom with us all. So please give him a huge round of applause and welcome him to the stage. Do I have a slideshow? Okay. Hi, thank you very much for having me today here. It's the third year, I think, for Canatech, and it's become bigger and bigger every year. I don't know if it's a good or bad, but it's a fact. So I have a laboratory for cancer research if in the Technion, if somebody don't know me. And when I speak with people about cannabis, people usually think that they know a lot of this plant. But how much we really know about it? It's not clear. People know the use of cannabis for medicine, and I guess part of you familiar with the use for other purposes. But cannabis, it's a very complicated plant. People are saying cannabis can kill cancer. But what does it really mean? Does every type of cannabis can kill Cancer cells? What is cancer? Cancer is a given name to hundreds of different diseases. We put it in a box. Bob Weinberg published a paper in, one, in 1996 saying that these are the six hallmarks. Every time that we see one, two, three, four, five, six, we will call it cancer. But it's a different illness. It's not the same. There are cancers that happen from activating one protein, and there is this another cancer that happened from shutting down the same protein. So can we treat it with the same medicine, these cancers? Which type of cannabis we need to use in order to treat these cancers? Okay. In my lab only, I have over than 500 different types of cannabis. So which one of them to choose? Do we really know? The answer is not, we don't know. So when we started to work with cannabis and check the anti-cancer properties of cannabis, we saw that there is a specificity between the types of the cannabis that we are using, the ability to attack cancer cells. So if we look on colon cancer, we see that cannabis number one is killing the colon cancer by doing nothing to prostate cancer. But cannabis number two will do nothing to the colon cancer on the upper, no, like that, on the upper square in the left, but doing nothing to the, uh, sorry, doing nothing to the colon cancer, but killing the breast cancer. So we see a specificity between the types of the cannabis and our ability to kill these cancers. So people are saying to me, okay, so you find the one that killed breast cancer, right? There was companies that published, we find the ratio between THC and CBD to kill breast cancer. The stock trays hundreds or thousands of times. So let's see, we'll take a breast cancer here, breast number one and breast number two. And you see, what we see is the ratio of cells, cancer cells are dying. And every color, it's a different strain that a patient can get in Israel. And you see that there are strains that can kill very efficiently the breast cancer number one, and there are strains that are not killing it. But if we look on different breast cancer, on the bottom and the left, so these strains are not killing it. So even in the same types of cancer, we have a, a different types of cells. So can we say cannabis can, can kill breast cancer? Can we say which one? And if we know that it's killing one breast cancer, does it will kill the other one? So what are the differences between them? Maybe it's the THC and CBD, right? We usually look on the THC and the CBD in the plant. So let's take this breast cancer number one and align it how much THC and CBD it has, what are the ratio? And we're doing it. And we see that there is no correlation between the amount of THC or the amount of CBD or the, or 
the ratio between them to our ability to kill the cells. So why, why is it? When you're going, people that making Rick Simpson oil, and I know hundreds in Israel, they write to me, I'm taking Erez and Avidekel, what right should you take between the THC and the CBD? So Erez and Avidekel killing all the cells, the cancer cells in Israel, if you don't know it. 99% of the people that using Rick Simpson oil in Israel, Erez and Avidekel, THC and CBD, and we, we, chew, we, we solved our problems. So why we're doing, what are the differences? So these are the flowers of the cannabis, but it don't have, oops, why that? We don't have just THC and CBD or other major cannabinoids. We have 10 families of cannabinoids and all together over than 100 cannabinoids. And we also have terpenes and we have flavonoids. And all together ends entering to our body. And there is a big difference between different types of cannabis. So in my lab, we have the ability to identify all the compounds in the cannabis plant. So if we look on these compounds, there is no THC in CBD, there is hundreds of compounds. And there are compounds with names that, that, that don't have names. We gave them 36117, but if you look on 33110, it's 1.2% in the plant. It's not a minor cannabinoid. So we never heard about it, but does it important or not? Does it the cannabis that we need to kill these cancer cells? Do we know it? Do we know how to treat our patient really? So usually I'm showing this image and we call it a heat map. So on the, on the row on the top, it's every strain number one, every one of them, it's different strain of cannabis. And on this column, it's the name of cannabinoids, and you saw in the, in the previous one that there is much more. And every square that it's dark, the meaning that this cannabinoid is highly expressed in this trend. When it's white, the, the meaning that it's not expressing. And you can see the differences between the strains in Israel. Every one of them contain different compounds. So every one of them is actually different medicine. So we call it cannabis. It's a different medicine. It's not a one treatment. So let's look how we're doing it in the lab. We're taking a cancer, a breast cancer, and every color that you see, it's a different cell lines. So the blue one, it's a cell, normal cells without mutations. The orange one is mutation that reducing 50% activity of the plant, of the, of the cell. So you have cancer, but it's not very aggressive one. The gray one, it's already reducing 70% of this protein and it's caused more aggressive. And the yellow one is very, very aggressive cancer, but the same mutation. And now we're screening many types of cannabis, hundreds of types of, uh, types of cannabis until we finding one, like cannabis one, number one here that there is a correlation between our ability to kill the cells to the mutation inside. And when we find it, and we prove that it's true, and we take it to its mice model, and we see that when we're treating, sorry for this image, gross one, but what you see is tumors that came out of, of mice. And on the left one, it's a mice without no treatment. On the right one, it's the treatment with this cannabis. So we prove it in a mice model, we prove it in all the cell biology that we know how to do. And now we're asking, what are the minimum compounds that are doing this effect? Do we really need the entourage effect, all the compounds inside, or does it, does it a single compound? So my slogan to my students, I want the minimum compounds that are doing maximum effect. I don't care if it's 1, 5, 17, or 100, but I want to know it. Because when I understand the mechanism of how it's attacking the cancer cells, and I understand what are the compounds, now I can take it to a treatment to a person. So how we're doing it? We're taking the oil, and we're running on the HPLC preparative, and we fraction the extract. We're doing fractions. So what is HPLC? HPLC is high pressure liquid chromatography. You're taking the extract, and you run it, and I'm sorry that if there is chemical an analysis here, that I'm flattening it, but you run it in a colon and it's going through bits and, 
And in the end of the, this, there is a detector that detects every time that a material reaches there. And it's a fraction or a, it spread the oil in a way that every material, every compound, will stack regarding its polarity. I don't want to get into details, but the idea that we can run it in fraction, tell the machine from here to here, collect it in tube number one, from here to here, collect it in tube number two. So we fraction this oil that kills these cells to four fractions, and now we treat the cells. And what you see here, it's cell viability. How many cells survive the treatment? So the red one, is the whole extract. And every color, it's different fraction. And you see that just fraction two is killing the cells. So we actually eliminate 75% of the compounds that we had there. Fraction two is enough to kill these cells with this mutation. So now we're taking fraction two. Oops, I'm reverse. We're taking fraction two, and we're doing fraction to this fraction. We cut it again, and we cut it again and again and again, and we go back to the cells until we reach the minimum compound that's doing this effect. And for this type of cells, we're talking on three cannabinoids that you need them. It's not one, and it's not the whole extract. You need three cannabinoids. Two of them quite familiar, and one of them, it's a cannabinoid that you never heard about it. 3311B. We don't have a name even for it. But if you take it away, it's not efficient anymore. So does it really matter what is the concentration of THC and CBD in Eros and Navidecal? So it's the... It's just an example. Does it really important? So if we're taking even the same flowers, and let's do a blow up on this one because my time is running out. We're taking the same flowers and we're looking here on cell viability. And you see that on the left one, very small amount is killing the cells. But this is ethanol extraction. If we're doing now CO2 extraction, it's not killing the cells anymore. So even doing different extraction method on these flowers will change the medicine our patient is getting. And without reaching this accuracy, we won't be able to treat our patient really. We'll still be in a way, in a world that we're trying and trying and giving and trying to do it. But if we really want to treat our patient, we need to get to, to, get to this accuracy. So on Friday morning, I had a call from a lady, 11 in the morning, and she said, Daddy, I'm treating my son-in-law with Rick Simpson oil, and I'm preparing this Rick Simpson oil, and I want to send you my extract to examine it. And I said, can you do it? I said, I can examine it, but how, what, what do we learn from that? She said, I will learn if I'm doing right, good extraction. I said, how you learn if it's good extraction or not? What is good extraction? I said, oh, I want to see that I'm getting more than 90% of THC. I said, you're not getting one, no more than 90% of THC. Never, from regular extraction. So, so uh, but I want to, do, uh, to know if it's good. What the meaning of good extraction? So which extraction method you prefer? You prefer? So I'm not preferring anyone, anything. I just know the difference. So if you're taking six different extraction me methods, okay? And you're doing this extraction with six, six different extraction methods. I have one, mon 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 one moment and a half, so I'm running fast. So, and, and so I will do a blow up on this. These are the same flowers with six different extraction methods. And you see that you're getting different material. So the first one, the ethanol one, is doing elevation to the five carbon tail cannabinoids. And the CO2 is doing elevation to the three carbon tail. Which one is important? For a Crohn patient, which one is better? For PTSD patient, which one is better? We know nothing, let's face it. We just don't know, we know that there is different. Do I know to, pr to, to suggest which extraction method is better? No. So people tell me, hey, daddy, you're showing such enormous 
results with the, with the cannabis. Why won't we do it legally? Why won't we give it to all the patients? So in the 22 minutes that I left, seconds, I want to show a study that we did in Rambam Hospital, and it's talking about immunotherapy. So immunotherapy today, it's the tip of the treatment of the cancer. So what we're doing, we're actually activating and teaching the immune system how to fight the cancer. We're not fighting the tumor itself, we're teaching the, the immune system how to fight the cancer. But we know about cannabis that when we have hyperactivity of the immune system, it's shutting it down or taking it off. This is the reason it's good, good to Im autoimmune disease. This is the reason that it's good to Crohn, to colitis, to inflammation, because it's taking, it's balancing the immune system. But now we're taking a drug that is the most efficient, most expensive drug in the hospital, that activating the T cells, and we're giving cannabis, and the result is that if we're giving this patient just the immune, immunotherapy, there is 40% for them to be success, to be cured. But if you're giving it with cannabis, it's going down to 10. Do we really want to give cannabis to this patient? Do we really want to harm them? We need to know better how to treat our patient. In Wednesday, I'm giving a talk in TED, and I'm finishing my, my talk in that way, and I will take, it will take a half a minute to say it. I'm, finishing, I'm planning to finish my talk like that. I'm saying I'm a scientist. I'm running a lab for cancer research in the Technion, the Technology Institute of Israel. I'm not a big fan of cannabis. If it was a spinach or fetunia, it was much easier for me. But it is cannabis. And what I learned in the last three years, that this plant has enormous potential to treat many illnesses. Whether we like it or not, it is here. We can't take it away. We can't take it away from the patient that have 200 seizures and now is seizure free. We can't take it away anymore from the autistic kids that it changed their life totally. We can't take it away from the PTSD patient that didn't sleep a whole night for years and now he come back to normal life. Cannabis is came back to the medical arena. We need to understand it. It's help and give hope to many people. It should be another tool in the toolbox of the physicians. But it's our responsibility to learn how to treat our patient better and how to precise it. It's our responsibility to take it to the next level. We, the scientists, the physician, the community, owing to our patient. Thank you very much. That, I just want to say thank you very much. Thanks to my amazing team that did all the work that I just showed. Um, Shirley Berman that did all the cannabinoid analysis. Liran Abraham that did part of the The cancer walk and they're off so I can't go on. Thank you very much.